So first of all, I'm happy to be here, and thank you for taking your time for showing up, as it makes me happy to be able to come make or help encourage others to be more healthy and extend your lives and so forth. So um, the topic is how fitness relates to your profession and your career, but I always like to start with just talking about pure fitness in general and what are the benefits of fitness so we're all on the same page. So some benefits of being fit. Susie. Longer life. Longer life. Deborah. Energy. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to spend more time with your family. Yeah, time with you. Energy, you okay. Sure. Energy. Yeah, it's energy. That's the third one. So. What else? Just feeling well in general. Feeling good. Yeah, it's your overall health is better. Better health. So we've got we're stronger. We're of ideal weight. That's a good thing, right? I mean, no one likes to talk about it anymore, but it's nice to feel like, you know, you're satisfied with your weight. It's not a burden on you, right? Flexibility, you're more resilient. People who exercise are more capable of handling, handling simple fender benders. So if there's me and my unfit twin and we both get rear-ended at 10 miles per hour, I walk out of it unscathed, she walks out in a neck brace. You know, every time you go down on your back to do crunches, you're working your neck. Heads are heavy, heads are eight pounds. So lifting your head against gravity that's working on your neck strength. So um, there's, a, there's tremendous benefits to becoming fit. You know, you mentioned mood. Fit people are nicer because they're addressing their stress, right? So if you make time to exercise most days of the week, the odds are you're going to be a better wife, a nicer mother, a better coworker. I'm sure you all are perfect in this room, but I imagine there are some snippy people around and you feel like, really? Go get on the treadmill. Just go for a walk, go do something, right? I mean, it's that, that release we all need. I know if something happens tragic, you know, 9-11, the first thing I did was go hit my heavy bag. It was just my natural instinct. I was so upset. That was the only way I could handle it. You know, when I have sick relatives, I end up on my treadmill all day. It just feels better for me. So, you know, if you haven't used it as that kind of stress relief, exercise will do it, whether you're dancing or doing Pilates or yoga. It really has that healing effect. Um, and now we can talk about the consequences of not being fit. So say you're a person who never exercises and never eats right. What's going to happen? Well, my mom got diabetes. Diabetes which is miserable. Type 2 diabetes is very preventable, and I encourage you to take that very seriously because it is an evil disease. In fact, I, have, I work on the um, board executive council for the Center of Excellence for Diabetes here at UF, and um, some of our other board members have diabetes, and they're very well versed in the health industry, and the, each of them said it would be easier to have HIV than diabetes. Diabetes, you have to manage every foot, you, every step you take, every bite you take. With HIV, apparently now you take a pill a day and you're mostly pretty good. So take that one very seriously. What else? If you are not fit, what's going to happen? You're going to be sick more often. Sick more often. Is that good here at work? No. No, you're weaker. Can you handle all the groceries? If you have kids, if you have to carry that kid around, are you more likely to have wrist pain and back pain? Absolutely. We lack flexibility, endurance. You were saying before, at the beginning of your workouts, uh, doing one flight of stairs. That just about killed me. Just about killed you. We're all young in this room. Hi, welcome. I'm Fitz. Nice to meet you. Come along. Yeah, one flight of stairs. We should all be do, able to do a handful of stairs and still feel pretty good. Um, the consequences go into heart disease, cancers shorten lifespan and I have two kids does anyone else here have cute kids or just families they really like in general <laughs> you know you take care of yourself you get to stick around you know so much focus is put on bikini bodies well whatever how about we stick around you know I would like you to live better and live longer I never walk into a room hoping people are gonna rock the beach next summer if, if you want to good for you and that that works fine but really do you want to get to 60? Yes? yes? 70? 80? I'd like to be in my hundreds. Do I want to be in my hundreds if I'm sick in bed all day? Absolutely not. So it's not only about living long, it's about living really well. Does that make sense? Yes. So who's up for 95? <laughs> yeah. When I talk to a kids, 95. a healthy 95. And that's what I say. Who wants to live to 100? They all do. I say, who wants to be sick in a wheelchair? And they're like, 
who wants to be the break dancing grandma? <laughs> and they all get that. So you got to put some effort into it. You know, we brush our teeth every day, yes. What happens if our teeth rot out? Can we live? Yeah. yeah, it's minor inconvenience, but we can go on without teeth. Can we go on without our heart? No. no. So that's, that's the thing. You've got these very important organs and muscles in your body, and you have to give them some attention. If you're willing to dedicate five minutes a day to your teeth, well, for crying out loud, five minutes to your heart and lungs makes a lot of sense to me. It's not such a big imposition. True? True. Good. So those are the generic benefits of being fit. We all agree we want that. Yes? Yeah, I mean, it, it matters. It actually does matter. And some people say, oh, well, I don't eat that. Or they joke about eating all the ice cream and steak and cupcakes. But it's not funny when it really, really matters. So I'm glad we're all on the same page. Professionally, what are the consequences to not being fit? Absenteeism. You're not there. Low productivity. Low productivity. Professionally, how would this affect you if you were not in good shape? You may not get a promotion because you can't keep up with the demands of your job. You may not get a promotion. You may not get the job in the first place. And it's, is it fair? Not necessarily, but first impressions matter. First impressions are formed within the first seven to sec 17 seconds of meeting a person. Statist statistics show that 55% of a first appearance is based off your appearance. Your first impression is based off appearance. So they will look at you and they will completely negate anything you've done, anything you're capable of based off your appearance. Do you stand up straight? Do you look fit and strong? Do you exude energy? Do you exude like the person that they want to hire that is not going to call in sick, who not only can do the math of a bookkeeper, but can show up and lug chairs out of the office if necessary? Are you going to be able to stay up late and be energetic the next day? You know, fit people have a really good reputation for being able to handle a lot of that, handle a lot of that type of work stress. Unfit people, maybe you're also a really hard worker. Maybe you are willing to lug chairs and you can stay up late, but will the person hiring you or making those decisions know that? It's 55% based off of your appearance. I think 7% is, ba I actually wrote this down. Let me not get this wrong. Let me not get the words we use. So what you say only counts 7% and 38% of a first impression is based off of the tone of your voice. Interesting, right? But what matters most is your appearance. You know, that's first impression. Long haul, maybe it doesn't make so much. But first impressions, they say, are almost completely irreversible. So professionally, it matters. People want to know that when you apply for a job that you're the can-do person, that you're the go-getter, you're reliable, you will never fail that business. So we want this, yes? OK, becoming fit is a great way to accomplish those great first impressions. You all may spend your entire career here. Or there may be some amazing job in Silicon Valley or New York City or something cool across town. Will you be ready for it when that time comes? Completely ready for it. You know, I, I want to focus on the quality of your life, but your employer, future employers, are going to focus on the total package. So your fitness level actually counts here, and it will help make you more successful. The mo more time you put into the gym, or focus on your eating habits, the better that will leave you professionally, income-wise, in the long run. Yes? Yes. OK, so back to the answers we were talking about before. Is to become fit, you have to do a couple of things. You have to eat right. You have to exercise often. You have to get proper sleep and manage your stress. And those are all actually really simply done. I, I get concerned because sometimes the media bastardizes the fitness industry and makes everything seem confusing, right? If there were a magic pill, wouldn't Oprah Winfrey be a size 10? Yeah? I, are, are you guys on social media? Mm -hmm. How many of your friends who have no nutrition degree do not have the expert fitness credentials I do are trying to sell you these silly wraps or shakes or pills or supplements? If any of them worked, Oprah Winfrey would be a size 10. She desperately wants it. We all know that, right? It doesn't exist. There is no magic pill. If you have a friend 
who's trying to sell you that stuff, remove them from your friends. It is unethical to try and sell you that nonsense with the end result that you may accomplish fitness. It won't happen that way. What you have to do is put in the time eating right. So eating, this is, uh, this is the bare minimum. 80% of your size is a direct result of your consumption habits, which means you may exercise all the time, but if you're eating too many calories or the wrong foods, there is no way to compensate for it. Reckless eating, you could run a marathon a day and still not be able to overcome that. You know, extra muffin, 600 calories, you'd have to run 600 miles, or six miles, just to get rid of one muffin. Is that crazy? Six miles for one muffin, is that worth it? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. So here's the formula for managing your own weight. Um, whether you wanna lose weight or maintain your weight. Think about your goal weight in mind. So I'm gonna say, we'll say 150, cause that's easy math. 150 pounds. If you would like to weigh 150, you tack a zero on the end of your goal weight, and that's your maximum amount of calories you should consume each day. 1,500. If you'd like to weigh 165, 1,650 will be your calorie, your top calorie number. And the reason being is, it takes calories are a fuel for your body, right? So say you weigh 200 pounds, and you want to maintain 200 pounds, pounds, you have to eat at least 2,000 calories to keep that size body going. We burn on average 10 calories per day per pound of body weight. And that's going, that's just going about our business. We wake up, we get dressed, we drive to work, we roam around the office. It takes energy to pump blood through your body, to digest your food, to expand your lungs, process oxygen. All of that takes calories. So if you if you weigh 170, you're likely eating about 1,700 calories a day. Unless you're gaining weight, then you're eating more than 1,700 calories. If you were 170 and you were stranded on an island and there was only some fruit and grilled chicken available, what are the odds you'd lose weight? Pretty good, right? Because mm -hmm. you simply wouldn't have the calories to maintain your body size. Does that make sense to you? So, you know, your weight is your deal, but if you are trying to lose, or maintain, throw a zero on the end of your goal weight. And so if you want to weigh less, you get less. If I weighed, if I ate the same amount of calories as my husband, who's a 190 pounds of solid muscle, I would become 190 pounds. I probably wouldn't be solid muscle. But you, we don't get the uh, luxury of all eating the same. So you eat for the body you want. And what I recommend you do, instead of taking your 1,500 calories a day and blowing them all on three muffins is to choose healthy foods. Does that make sense? So you're gonna get a calorie counting app, maybe MyFitnessPal or CalorieCount.com and you can just search in your phone for a good app that helps you count calories, but every bite you take throughout the day you wanna put in there just like you manage your money. So do we all check our, our balance on the, our, on the website for our bank? It's the same exact thing as managing your money. If you want to save money, you have to make sure you're not spending more than you make, right? If you would like to go into debt, then spend more than you make. <laughs> so financial debt is equivalent to weight gain. It's a negative thing. Um, so, you, so you get up and your choices are, if you want to be wise with your eating habits, are produce, really high in, in nutrition, very low in calories for the norm, lean protein sources. So is anyone here vegetarian? No, that makes it easy. Choose lean protein. I don't care if you choose steak or pork or chicken or fish, but get a lean cut. Usually those end in the loin, so sirloin, pork loin. And you could actually see if you're buying food at the uh, meat at the butcher, you can see fat marbled throughout that meat. That's fat. So it's not just white part of the meat. It's fat in there, so you can actually look at some meat and go, wow, that's, it's got a lot of marbling. I'm gonna avoid that. Um, so you've got your produce, lean protein, lean dairy sources. The only difference between uh, regular milk and skim milk is that the fat has been skimmed out of the skim milk. So you could choose to drink whole milk, but you have to understand that it's loaded with a heck of a lot more fat and that's animal fat and it's not very good for your heart. But quality-wise, they both provide the same amount of vitamin D and calcium. 
And so if you also are searching for other choices, there's almond milk and rice milk and a bunch of other options, but you'll have to research those. Uh, yogurts, a low-fat yogurt, again, the same thing. It just has the fat removed. That's a simple concept, right? Yeah, and so maybe your tastes haven't gone that way. Maybe you're like, oh, I don't normally like skim milk. Give it a go, because it's worth it. I used to be the full fat milk drinker and the full soda drinker, and, and just an, an FYI, I was 45 pounds heavier in high school. And the reason I was is because I grew up in a house with horrible eating habits. We had every type of uh, unhealthy meat, and I'm sure my mom put some oil or butter in it. And we always had tons of potatoes, and they were always coated with butter. And then there were rolls, which we coated with butter. And maybe there was a canned vegetable out. And my poor mom, she definitely tried to buy us fruit. But there was always a freezer full of M&Ms and uh, pizza bites and or bagel bites, right? And, and oh, Slim Jims. And they would, we just ate recklessly. And we played sports all the time. But I wasn't able to account for that reckless eating habit. So, um, so be wise with your calories. If you stick to the produce and the lean protein and the lean dairy and whole grains, you can have a lot of food within your calorie range. So if 1,500 calories is what you get, I'm envious, because that's a lot of calories if you're eating wisely. And uh, is anyone a sales shopper? Sales, are you? Yeah, oh, you're like, maybe. I do. My, my sister, she always had a coach bag. And she'd go spend $600 on a coach bag, and she'd get one. And I never have been. I'm not a, I just don't care about labels and stuff like that. So I would rather go to Old Navy and buy 50 Old Navy purses to her one coach bag. And so for me, I make the same comparison with food. There's cheesecake, and I could have one piece for 1,000 calories, or I could go to the produce section and eat all day. I really like a lot of food. I'm not a huge girl, but trust me, I eat a lot of food. I just eat wisely. So I, you know, I, think, of it, I think of it as sales shopping. You know, I get those really smart foods like spaghetti squash. It tastes just like pasta. If you've never tried spaghetti squash, give it a go. You buy it, you throw it in the microwave for 17 minutes, and then you cut off the top and take a fork and pull out the strands of pasta in there. Or I guess it's pasta. What, what do we call it? Spaghetti it's the squash. But it tastes like pasta, but it only has like 50 calories for a massive bowl full of fiber, wildly filling, and it makes you feel like you're eating Italian. Just throw some tomato sauce on it. So think simple. It's not so complicated. If you want to choose organic, go ahead. I don't buy organic food because I usually find bugs in it, and I'm squeamish. So, you know, those are options for you to take further or not. Um, but really, healthy eating boils down to sticking to the perimeter of the grocery store, um, making those wise choices, saying no thank you five times a day. So if you wake up and someone's like, hey, I got a donut, or here's a fancy coffee, or whatever it is, say no thank you. And when you walk by, you'll feel better for it. It's really easy stuff. And look at food as fuel. If you want to go have fun, go have fun. Go dancing, go bowling, go roller skating, go hiking. Go do something that actually makes you laugh. Food is not there to make you laugh. When's the last time you bit into a sandwich and was like, wow, <laughs> has, that, has that ever happened? No? I think about cruises. So my family, we do, um, we find adventure uh, for vacations. We try to plan really healthy, active vacations. And you know, with cruising, people go and they're hell-bent on, on gaining 10 pounds, and I'm going to get my money's worth in food. Well, P.S., you will never be able to eat enough money, eat enough food to compare to the money you spent, right? So you know, make memories. If you're going to plan a fun activity, plan for fun. Nobody looks back 15 years on that bowl of rice they ate that day. Remember that rice we had? That was awesome. That, will never ever happen to you. So, you know, if you're gonna go on a vacation, go hiking, go surfing, go zip lining, there's a ton of options, but vacation and at home, your fun should be centered around legitimate fun. It gets you out, and if you happen to be moving vigorously in the process, great. If you go to the movie theater, movie theater is there for you to enjoy a movie. You are not required to eat buttery popcorn and chocolate snow caps. That's right. You know, who does that? Are oh, you required a little bit? You could sneak in a little bit. But yeah, it's funny how we do that hand in hand, and you almost feel deprived if you go to a movie theater. If someone would deprive me of my gummy worms, 
where is it? I have to have it. And it, it's those simple traditions we have. What if people used to just go to the movies and never had junk food? What if we just watched a movie? What would that be like? You know, what would that be like if those people didn't do it and then we didn't have to feel deprived because we weren't doing it? So, you know, just think wisely. Food is for fuel. Maybe have a nice dinner, a nice healthy dinner before you go to the movies and then you don't have to feel compelled to gobble up all the stuff in the snack bars and it's really too expensive anyways. Correct? Mm -hmm. Unless you're totally rich, then good for you. But $82 of popcorn seems a little outrageous to me. That is a small one. It's awful. It really is. In fact, my kids, I sneak in raisins and maybe I'll get them like baked lay chips or, you know, I don't know. But we, we try and sneak in healthy snacks for them. And, and they don't know any other way, so they don't feel deprived. They just, that's what we do. You know, either we have nothing or we have raisins and they're good. But you can make those minor modifications to your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The other first thing I tell my clients, I do have some personal training clients, the very first thing I get them to do is stop drinking their calories. Water is the gold standard, but then there's a lot of other options. You know, of course, soda, full calorie soda, not wise. Even most juices are nonsense. Gatorade is just as bad as Coke. Unless you are running a marathon, you do not need Gatorade. You do not need to replace your electrolytes from your Pilates class. It just doesn't need to be done. In, fa in fact, we call Gatorade in my house and, you know, I, all props to M Mr. Cade who invented it, the great Gator, but we call it throw up juice. So my kids can only have Gatorade if they're throwing up because that's when they need it. Other than that, they give them water and they go, that's throw up juice. <laughs> sounds horrible, but, you know, that's the way they look at it. So they, they've never had a sip other than when they're throwing up. They don't crave it. In fact, they feel like, oh, we have to drink throw up juice. It's, it's a bad experience, but it works for them. It works for us and they're healthy as little kids and they have no calories. Um, so there's the full calorie sodas and, and coffee beverages, which we're all familiar with, water, and then there's the naturally low calorie beverages, which would be regular coffee or tea. Um, there's the middle ground, there's Diet Coke. There's some of these flavored waters. Are they perfect? No, no but you know what? Are they a fantastic step in the right direction from full calorie soda? In my book, yes. I am a girl who has a Diet Coke every day. I've never been a coffee drinker. And, and people tell you, oh, Diet Coke will make you gain weight, hogwash. Do I look like I've been struggling because of my di daily Diet Coke? It just isn't true. It's a zero calorie beverage. So, um, and it's satisfying to me. And because of that, I don't go have big muffins or, or whatever it is. So, you know, if you're on the higher end, if you are drinking full calorie sodas and you're, you're not ready to just switch for, to water, maybe you go from Pepsi to Diet Pepsi. You don't like Diet Pepsi. Well, go try Diet Orange Soda or whatever. I mean, just move in the right direction because you know what? Perfect's boring. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to start making those quality decisions with the end goal in mind. Hey, I want to be 95 and I want to break dance. I want to golf. I want to, I want to play with my great, great, great grandchildren or whoever's around. So perfect is, is unessential. It would be nice. I am not perfect. I have a piece of chocolate every day. I just make sure it's a small one. And if I don't, I get in bed last n at night. I'm like, oh, I don't have any chocolate. It's very stressful to me. So again, you don't have to be perfect. 10% of the time, you know, have whatever. You have a slice of pizza, just don't have the whole pie. Any questions? No, no? All right, manage those calories wisely. You don't have to be fanatical about it, but if you're trying to lose, if you're trying to get somewhere, you should be pretty rigid about it for a while. And then when you hit your goal weight, you can be a little more flexible but I encourage you, if weight loss is your goal, to really focus on that. And um, you know, just as you would if you were trying to get out of debt, you would know how much money, extra money you're making, putting in overtime, making better choices. Um, now, exercise. The most common questions I get are what type should I do, how often should I do it, and how hard should I do it? So there are four different types of exercises. One of them is cardiovascular exercise, and that focuses on your heart, lungs, and endurance. That's the exercise that makes your body go for a long time. You should be doing that. So maybe you just like Pilates and that's great. Think about bodybuilders. Amazing muscular development. Can they jog a block? I don't know. You don't get to qualify as fit 
unless you are sufficient in all of these areas. So really, cardiovascular, heart health. That's important. You don't have to run a marathon, but do you like Zumba? Do you like cycling, swimming? There's a bunch of great options. Get a hula hoop, a jump rope. There, I hear some of you are walking the halls of this monster building. That's a great idea. Um, remember we used to have smoking breaks? Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. That businesses actually put 15 minutes aside for you to go and stand outside and smoke? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I hold human resources, I bet you guys have a handle on that, but those should be traded for fitness breaks. So you're walking within these walls during the summer and you're walking around the building during the, window, during the winter. And you get to a pace where you're huffing and puffing and you'll be fine. You have all these cute little outfits on now. Bring some sneakers to work. Even if you're in a dress and you feel silly, there's nothing silly about making an effort towards your health. So I'd rather you look silly for your 15 minutes mm -hmm. cigarette break than- uh, We're in dresses and we're in sneakers. I love it, I love it. That's the best look to me. Um, that's cardiovascular exercise, strength training, makes your muscles stronger. Simple as that. And you should be training all the muscles in your body. So we talked about how crunches work your neck. Not many people think, oh, I gotta go exercise my neck. But it's important because of those fender benders are out there and one of them's looking for you. So if you're doing crunches, you're making your back strong, your abs strong, and your neck strong. So try and create a total body routine. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, flexibility training, which is stretching. If your muscles are not pliable, they're more likely to tear. So we think about the people who are, you know, I hear a lot of my guy friends, they're putting on their socks in the morning and they pull something in their back. So you're just not flexible. So simple things. We all, again, everyone in this room is of age that should be able to touch their toes. You know, simple stuff, reaching up, over, stretch in the shower. There's a lot of options for you, but flexibility. So we've got cardio, strength, flex, flexibility, and balance. And balance is something they added to the big fitness category about 10, 15 years ago. But having good balance prevents you from doing what? Falling down. And so we watch people walking around in boots. Most of them were not out in like a kickboxing match. Most of them tripped over their own feet or over a chair or something like that. In fact, lack of balance is the number one reason um, for elderly people ending up in the hospital, which ends, usually ends up in, or often ends up in death because they broke their hip and their body wasn't able to handle it. So balance training is ideal. And you can do that on balance training tools like a bow suit a stability ball, they have little balance desks, or you could stand on one foot. Actually, everybody stand on one foot. Get up. <laughs> so stand on one foot. Very impressive. Now close your eyes. <laughs> it's a different beast, right? That's a very simple balancing. Close your eyes, now put your arms out to the side. Oh, you're cheating. Keep them closed, <laughs> keep them closed. Now bring your arms up above your head. Totally changing everything. Okay, go ahead and sit down. But you understand what I'm saying, right? Those are, there's very simple things you could do. <laughs> you could get up at your desk and do this simple here. You could, with one eye, I don't even know if I could do it, but let's see. One foot and heels. Follow your fingers all the way up and down. There's you know, a, a, a lot of simple m things you can do without any equipment. Then you can elevate your workouts too. Standing on a BOSU, which is that half bubble. Do you know what the BOSU is? This is awesome to have an audience who everybody knows what a BOSU is. But you could get up there and do all of your lower body workouts. You could do your squats. You could do your weightlifting up on that thing. I mean, you really have um, a lot of range when it comes to balance training. But it's important and simple, simple activities like going from the sidewalk to the grass take a lot of people to the hospital every year so don't be one of those people and you all have cute shoes so <laughs> you need them to stand up i keep my heels low because i'm terrified of falling down especially in front of a group so something to think about so there's four elements cardio strength flexibility balance training you should do a variety of them all you can choose to do more of one than the other that's fine but incorporate all four of these elements throughout your week and you should see progress now how hard is the question I get, how hard should I be working on? It's kind of hard to judge that for yourself, right? So with cardiovascular training, what I like to tell people is they should be huffing and puffing. 
So if you can walk comfortably, like you're walking through the mall, not good enough at all. If you're walking with a friend and you can have a conversation that sounds something like this, 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 I wish this was over, this stinks, I can't wait to get back to the office and get off of my feet. You know, if you can have a huffy puffy conversation, that's great. If you can't chat at all, you're probably working a little bit too hard. So you gotta be somewhere in that range of this is difficult and I can't have a full conversation, but I can have some sort of conversation. And that's why if you go to a group class or if you have a trainer, they talk to you a lot. And so no matter how hard my clients are working, I'm like, so tell me about your work today or whatever. And if they can't tell me, I know we have to back off a little bit. And if they look too comfortable, uh, then we crank things up a lot and they get a little more uncomfortable. So cardiovascular, do the huff and puff test. Strength training, you should grunt a little bit. So a lot of times, especially the ladies, we see the five pound dumbbells and there's kind of a swing in the arm. Gotta choose a weight that challenges you. So if you pick something up and it feels easy, it's not gonna make any progress. You're not gonna make any progress. So don't pick up something too heavy because then you'll get hurt. So you have to pick up something that, you know, by rep seven or eight, you're going, oh, this is really heavy. You know, if it makes you grunt and squint your eyes, that's how hard you should be working for strength training. Stretching should make you wince. This is not a stretch for me, but if I go all the way down and my eyes start to do that thing, you know you're, stre <laughs> you're getting a proper stretch. Does that make sense? Yes, and then when you're doing balance training, it should make you wobble. So most of you could stand here with no problem. And that wasn't challenging your balance. But the second you close your eyes, I saw people moving, and that meant that was an appropriate move for you. So huff and puff, grunt, wince, and wobble. Those are your how hard <laughs> measuring tools. Does that make sense to you? Everybody's good with that? Okay, great. And then how often? So you were suggesting there's the three times a week, 30 minutes deal, and that's fine. How many hours are there in a week? I know the answer, we know. Math, who's our bookkeeper? You're the bookkeeper, you're the payroll girl. So, <laughs> it's 168 hours in the week. So for the most part, we're sedentary, right? We sleep for seven to nine hours every night if we're lucky. We're in the car, we watch TV, we're stuck at a desk. So maybe at a restaurant, maybe at a movie, not eating popcorn. Um, but we're sedentary, we sit down an awful lot. So if I said, hey, I want you to exercise for one hour, and this is deliberate movement. So going, you know, walking around this building to run errands or whatever, we're not gonna count that as deliberate exercise. If I say one hour where you are focused on only exercise out of 168, is that too much? Two out of 168. Four out of 168. You see where I'm going with this? We do so, we're so sedentary that our, our efforts in deliberate exercise should be more than that three times 30. And that is the norm. That's normally what you hear. But I think today people are figuring out that that should be 30 to, to an hour and a half a day. You know, so maybe it's you get up and you walk your dog for half an hour, and then you take these 15 minutes walk and talk breaks where you're walking and doing the stairwell, and then maybe at night you go take a class. You go do strength training or yoga or whatever it is. You could break it up. You don't have to do it all. Absolutely. At the same time. Absolutely. And I break it up. I start every day doing the morning mile with my kids. My, my eight year old, God, what a runner he is. He did over three miles today in 30 minutes. And so I got to run three miles in 30 minutes. And so that was the first part of my workout. And then I, I did some desk stuff and I'm here. And then later, I'll, later on tonight, I'll get in my gym for about 45 minutes. And I'll do some strength training and maybe some kickboxing or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's okay to break it up. But plan it in because if not, you're, you're sitting. This is your posture. This is the majority of your time is spent in this position. And you have joints. They're made to go in all sorts of different directions. So you shall allow them to go through those motions. And if you just make a habit of building this stuff into your life, your life will be better. Your life will be longer. So it's golfing classes. It's you know going to take a circus training. Have you ever done that? There's, there's local people who do trapeze and tissue classes. I took them for four weeks, and it was very challenging. But it was 
it was fun and it was one of those things I'm, you know, I, I'm a mom and I own two businesses and I feel like a slave to everything else but myself. But I took these four classes for me. It was really, really a good time. So, you know, may, maybe plan something out with the girls or your, your spouse or, or your buddies. We're going to go do this zip lining course or whatever it is. But, but mix things up and have fun and, you know, that's a nice way to keep fitness fresh and interesting and something that you're motivated to do. Yes? Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? No. I think a lot of people also forget that getting into the yard and doing the yard. Oh, yeah. That, that's very really physical. It is. It can be. In fact, we you just. Don't consider that as exercise. Well, it depends what you're doing. Does it count on ex as exercise? So, unloading the dishes, you probably burn about 100 calories in half an hour. Is it better than sitting on the couch? Absolutely, but it's not as good as pulling weeds or mowing the lawn or pushing furniture around to vacuum. So, you know, get up and do something, you know, and no matter what it is, if you're sitting at home and you're feeling sorry for yourself or lazy or whatever it is, just think of something to do. And if you have kids, incorporate them into it. Because a lot of times people use their children as an excuse to be unhealthy. They say, well, I got to take my kids to soccer so I can't exercise well. They're playing on the inside of the field. Do laps on the outside of the field. I have to eat healthy because my, I can't eat healthy because my kids have all this junk food. Well, what kind of a parent are you shoving junk food down your kid's mouth all day? Well, how, are, how is this junk food helping your kids? Because the junk food my mom gave to me turned me into a kid who was, had very serious issues with her weight. I wasn't generous. I know my mom loved me, but it's, you know, you gotta flip the switch. Teach your children to be healthy provide healthy food and, and role model that behavior. So if you don't have kids, eventually it'll be, a, it'll be an issue. But you have to take every issue in your life, every, everything that's staring at you in the face, making fitness more of a challenge, you have to find a way around it. And so work could be one of those obstacles. I'm not sure what your break room looks like, but I know in most break rooms, there's always some nice guy who brings a box of donuts in a couple of times a week. Do we have one of those nice guys in this building? Really? We buy the park mat. We have chocolate chip cookies. Okay. And, and if you're trying to lose weight, does it make you happy when someone plops a box of chocolate chip cookies in front of your, you know, in front of you? It makes life a little bit harder, right? So maybe try and um, create an atmosphere around here that is a little healthier. And so it sounds like if you're not having the donut guy, that's a really good start. Um, Cloud Nine Spa Salon, they still yell at each other. I, I went and spoke a few years ago and they did have a serious donut muffin problem. And there was some generous person who thought they were helping everyone out, being sweet, providing the junk. But, but the women there were like, I wish it wasn't here because then it wouldn't be this, um, it wouldn't be enticing for me. I wouldn't have to face it. So, you know, keep your, share your shared break room options, healthy choices, and even put up a sign that says, please don't make our lives more challenging by leaving cake and muffins and things like that in the break room, and that would help. Um, do you do birthday parties here? <laughs> okay, a lot of offices provide a cake for everybody's birthday, and then there's so many employees that it feels like every day of the week there's birthday cake. So maybe instead of celebrating every birthday individually, have a cake at the beginning or at the end of the month. And there's six people honored on one cake and we only have to do birthday cake once. You're smirking, is that an issue? Do we have birthday cake issues? I just had a birthday and I asked for a fruit salad. And oh. people got mad at me. Isn't that, that funny? I asked for fruit salad, you know, I should have had a cake. No, that's been, what an awesome role model. I'm going to take a picture of you before oh, I leave and right. say she had fruit salad for her birthday. <laughs> but that's a really good, you know, a really good choice. Either if you're going to have cake, condense it into one day or choose healthy options. You could do an office potluck where everybody provides healthy food. And um, I did a corporate fitness challenge at TV20 recently. And all the employees showed up for lunch, brought various uh, potluck items, healthy things. We exchanged recipes. We talked about why this pasta salad was healthier than the norm. And that was a really nice thing because that, now they're supporting each other. And more than 50% of their participants achieved their weight loss goal. Or, you know, some of them were already slim, but they hadn't been exercising and they had 
started doing a 5K every weekend. That was their goal. So there were a lot of different challenges. Not every fitness challenge has to involve weight loss. You know, having an ideal weight is ideal because, you know, the extra weight feels bad on your joints. It causes burdens along the way. But that's not the only way to be challenged. You know, I could certainly jump into a fitness weight loss challenge and become better than I am. And that's what they're there for. So, you know, hopefully you all will be supportive of each other. I encourage walk and talk. So if you two have to get together, instead of sitting at a desk to talk about whatever issue it is, walk and talk and get the executives in on this too. Because if they're having walk and talk meetings, that really breeds a culture of health around here. And it sounds like you guys are already making it's your cigarette break. Are you talking business or just talking? both. Mm -hmm. And it's a nicer way to do things, right? You feel better. Aren't you happier when you're done with that? Yeah, you feel more energetic. Yeah, it's, it's the simple stuff that matters. And so going back to how fitness relates to your profession, it's, this is the things that matter. You know, you give off the uh, energy that you're the go-getter, you're the busy person, you're taking care of yourself and your work, you're making things happen. Um, going back to those first impressions, Yes, a fit, healthy body with str strong posture is relevant. You know, someone who stands up straight versus someone who's a little nervous or shy. You know, they'll do side-by-side -side pictures, and it's the same person. But if one of those people is here or looking down, you know, the uh, participants in a study will think negatively of that very same person because they were slouching. So great posture. Dress neatly. Dress for the job. You know, are you wearing neat, tapered clothes? Do you iron them? I hope so. Every day. Every day we hate ironing. I, too, I do too. But it's the simple stuff that goes a really long way. Um, you guys look like a great group. And I feel, I feel very happy to be here. Is there anyone who has any questions? What about when you hit that? I hear people say, you know, I keep exercising, but I'm not losing weight. My body has gotten used to my routine. How often should you change up your routine so your body doesn't get used to it? You know, you could change it up a few ways. You could go, uh, for a month I'm gonna run, and then another month I'm gonna cycle, and another month I'm gonna do Zumba. Um, and those are different ways of moving your body. So your body will become more efficient at a certain activity if you allow it. So those people who run marathons for years on end, Marathons are easy for them now because their body's accustomed to it. So you could change month by month, or you could plan running Monday, Zumba Tuesday, Pilates Wednesday, yoga Thursday, stadium climbing Friday, kickboxing class on Saturday. So you could do it in stages, or you can make sure every day throughout the week looks a little bit different. But you do have to change your workouts after a while because your body is smart and will become efficient. So. You know, that's why you become less sore. You're really sore the first time you try and exercise, and then after that, you never get sore. It's because your body's like, okay, I understand this motion. I've gone through it. It's not a stress. It's not a stress anymore. Um, I publish Alert's website. It's fitness.com. I am local. So if anyone has any questions from here till the end of time, you can find me there. Fitness is what, where I am on everything, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. It's fitness at AOL. So I'm local. I can harass you in person. I will stop by and randomly harass you in person. It's one of my favorite things that I do. Um, shameless plug, I have a core training video coming out in a couple of months. It's called Flip Flop Abs, and it's a lot of fun. We have a bunch of amazing old gators in the video with me, Chris Doring and Travis McGriff. And, local ultra marathoner, Dwayne McKee. Um, but I'd love for you guys to check that out when it's done. And you know, any way I can be of service to you guys, I'm sure maybe tomorrow something may pop in your head. There are no stupid questions. And um, I am seriously invested in you. So if, if you do have any special needs, let me know and I'll always be available. Thank you. Oh. Before I share, I just want to question you. I mean, you mentioned um, you're making a habit out of a lot of the stuff. And I think for me that's been Maybe the hardest thing is the consistency of it, um, especially in the last few years. I've you know, really tried to focus on, you know, I feel like I know what I should be eating and what I should be doing as far as fitness. Um, it's been a lot more important to me in the last couple of years. My dad had a quadruple bypass. He has type 2 diabetes. So sure. I know that runs in our family. Um, and I, I feel like I do well for, you know, a couple of weeks at a time, you know, and I know what I'm supposed to be eating and I'm replacing, you know, things with no 
Greek yogurt, um, but then I you know get sick or something trips me up and I you know fall off the wagon. So what's your I guess best tip to to keep people you know consistent? Well, everyone's got a different uh, incentive. Mm -hmm. So for you, it could be something as simple as a picture of your dad on the fridge, or you know some people get those empty type to diabetes needles or whatever, just some sort of, I mean, because that's your motivation now. You actually have a motivation for a really long life that's quality because your father's quality has gone straight down, hasn't it? It's not, and that's not okay. So um, that's not an intermediate goal. Some people have, like, I'm going to lose weight for a reunion. You have real legitimate purpose behind your efforts. So you have to find a way to recognize those and being sick is not an excuse you know you may you may not be able to exercise while you're sick but there's no excuse for cheesecake to be a part of that illness that's not helping your recovery you know the more healthy your decisions while you're sick the sooner you'll get better fast be, get better correct so you know you could put symbols around that do remind you you could put notes in your cell phone <laughs> eat wisely today and have it go for the rest of the year, every day, an appointment with me to exercise. You could get a trainer. You know, you're in a point, you're at a place where you need to make a decision and stay firm with it. So you have a few options. Um, harass yourself. Invite your friends to harass. So your coworkers. Hey, how you doing today? What's going on? Are you exercising? You want to come for a walk with us? What you got in your lunchbox? You know, the difference between the people who are very successful with weight loss efforts and efforts to become more fit, and those who aren't is, have you put your foot down? Are you completely done with the status quo? You know, when you finally get sick of where you are and you're like, forget it, I am not gonna be this way anymore, I am not gonna make these unhealthy choices, if you put your foot down, you will see major change. And that's, that was my story. I mean, I lost weight by changing my eating habits, and um, I think, I went from like a size 13 to a six based off my eating habits, and then I was fighting. That was actually my sport. For about 10 years, I competed as a full contact kickboxer. And um, eight, I, I, we were trying to get an opponent, but back in the day, back in the day, there weren't any female kickboxers around. So now it's very popular, all these you know interesting sports, but it certainly wasn't then. And I think I was 131, and I, we got a phone call that there was a girl available in Tampa to fight me. But she weighed 114, which meant I couldn't come in at any more than 117 pounds. And that was eight days away. Wow. And so my trainer said, Fitz, what do you think? I said, I'll make that weight. Now, mind you, I was a person who had been struggling with my weight since I was 10 years old. I had a mean sister who always picked on me and, and you know, helped kind of create that little monster. But I said, I can lose that weight. And it was so weird. Why did I think I could lose the weight when I never could before? And um, he said, okay, I'll book the fight for you. And so I, you know, I ate nothing but like half a potato every morning. It was, it was a terrible way to lose it, but I wasn't at that point thinking of my thighs or my hips or any part of me. What I was doing was trying to get to this really fun spot. And so that was my motivation. I had this like, yay, I get to fight in the ring and hooray. So I suffered, I made it happen. But this is where I made my, my turn. There was, I, I had lost weight before in many ways and kind of gained it back just like everybody else did. And so I had the fight and went great and they always have an after party at a sports bar. And so I arrived in my little dress and everybody knew I was starving. Do you know, do you ever watch Simpsons and there's Mr. Burns and he goes, <laughs> when he's fighting? <laughs> I kind of felt like that, I was so tired. But um, I go to the sports bar and there's the buffet with the chicken wings and the curly fries and the cheesecake. And it was just amazing. And people just thought I was going to eat it all. And I looked and then I thought, I thought, you know what? I'm finally here. This is what I've been striving for for 10 years. I finally, I mean, I did it in a really stupid way, but I finally hit the goal weight, you know, that I, the place I wanted to be. And so I turned away from the buffet and I pulled out cash and I bought myself a grilled chicken salad. And it was that simple choice where I got up there and I was like, wow. And then I thought, wow, because I had really, you know, 14 pounds in a week. That was a pretty dramatic difference. Um, so I wowed on myself. I said, wow, I've accomplished something great. I am not going to let it go. 
And I got the grilled chicken salad and then we went out and people had dessert and I got myself a single like low fat cup of ice cream and I was able to just choose the right things from there on. But it was that, that was my fork in the road. So, you know, you have to find your fork in the road and you have to make that decision for yourself. I really wanted those chicken wings. I, I really did, I was a hungry girl, but I knew that the chicken wings weren't gonna get me anywhere good and they were gonna take away the success I had had. So, um, you know, you'll make those decisions every time you wake up. Anytime someone walks through the halls with a box of donuts or cookies or birthday cake, you know, every time you say no thank you, make a habit of saying no thank you five times a day because people will randomly offer you stuff and jot it down, make a checklist, and you'll see a change and you'll be better for it.